Back from Cancun and hopefully looking tan and ready for some video game news. One of viewers, what up, what up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, April 15th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Uh, going all the way back to last weekend, um, Kingdom Hearts 4 was announced, uh, which is pretty surprising considering I'm pretty sure that Kingdom Hearts 3 was supposed to be like a definitive end for the series. Um, so the fact that they're uh, celebrating 20 years, so congrats to Kingdom Hearts, um, but that there's a fourth one coming out um definitely felt a little off but i think people are always excited to jump into the boots of sora and run around different disney based worlds um during the trailer the four four minute trailer or so that i'll have a link down below in the description of um there was uh looked like you sora was on the uh the moon of endor uh because you saw kind of like a you could saw an atst um footprint kind of in the background so uh, i think star wars is definitely going to be one of the worlds that we go to in kingdom hearts 4 um but i'm curious what other disney ip they're going to open up i think a lot of people are speculating if marvel worlds are going to open up and uh what other what are the places they could go so um it seems like the mouse needs a little bit needs to milk a little bit more uh money out of people and uh square enix is happy to oblige so um yeah let me know what you think uh, a cool new world uh, that Sora could go to in Kingdom Hearts 4. Um, yeah, I don't know. Toy Soldier? That was DreamWorks, wasn't it? Toy Soldiers. Um, maybe if there's a new Buzz Lightyear world associated with... Um, I know we've been to Toy Story World, but if there's one specifically dedicated to like the new Buzz Lightyear movie, that'd be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think down below in the... the down below in the comments. No Man's Sky is finally letting people fulfill their deepest dreams in the latest update where people are allowed to become space pirates and smugglers. Um, so their new Outlaws update launched this week and uh, yeah, you can smuggle you can smuggle some stuff across, uh, across different places. You can become a space pirate. Um, so No Man's Sky keeps releasing the hits i think this was their they they listed this one as their big 19th update so um yeah and they've been slowly adding more and more content to the game and really giving it a second life uh some of my friends even started talking about jumping back, in, back into the game even though we've this this would be the third time we've jumped back in um and we jumped back in after they did the companions and the base building so there's definitely a lot to do if you haven't picked up no man's sky since uh the game launched um so yeah look look at the uh new outlaw update or check it out at least uh moving right along QuakeCon is confirmed happening this year unlike e3 um but it will be digital only um i believe they're hoping that this would be the last year that they go digital only but uh yes this will be um, exclusively digital um i'm expecting most of their um most of bethesda's content to uh be kind of announced at i guess summer game fest this this year but they could save a lot of their cards and hold them to their chests until um we get uh until quakecon in august so hopefully i'm hoping that we'll see something kind of june and that quakecon will kind of rehash or give us more details on some of that stuff but uh yeah they could just wait until august to kind of announce their entire slate for q4 which would be uh kind of late but uh, they've done they've done shorter campaigns in the past, so uh, I wouldn't hold I wouldn't hold it past them. Um, Bean Dog, a smaller smaller developer, um, known I think or at least they crossed my radar when they uh, did a few ports for Baldur's Gate 2 recently, um, but they were recently bought out by Asper, another smaller developer, but they're the co they're the company who is working on the Kotor remake, the Knights of the Old Republic remake. Um, which is a subdivision of Saber Interactive. Saber Interactive has worked on, uh, usually work, uh, working on the developer behind like a lot of the Horde simulators. So I think they did World War Z, um, a couple other games. And all of this is under the greater umbrella of the financial group, uh, the Embracer Group. So same company that has like the THQ assets, 
um, and Saber Interactive and a couple others. I think they have a partial investment in Gearbox or is Gearbox fully under the Embracer group? I think it is actually. So, um, but yeah, so the Embracer group got another, got, you know, added another notch to its belt with Beamdog. And uh, there's a little bit more news about that a little bit later that I'll jump into. Looks like PSVR has been delayed out of this year. Uh, we won't be getting PSVR 2. Well, we won't get the second iteration of PlayStation VR until 2023. Um, they were talking about specs and delays, and it just sounded like things aren't going to be uh, hitting this year. So there won't be any holiday bundles for us to check out. Um, so my opportunity to jump into VR is still kind of waiting on whenever I want to buy a, uh, a, a Quest um, so I'll have to check that out sometime soon. Uh, good guy Randy Pitchford, speaking of Gearbox, um, has done done a solid and bought a very uh, an LA landmark. Um, he bought the Magic Castle. A they've been uh, Magic Castle is a uh, kind of magical magic themed restaurant. It's a it's a landmark that's been in LA for uh, forever. Uh, um, and uh, it's just been struggling with the pandemic. It's hard to do live shows as much as uh, any live um, performances have been uh, hit by the pandemic. So uh, Randy Pitchford, who is a magician himself, um, bought the Magic Castle to kind of uh, uh, enshrine it. So, you know, he's not going to do anything with it, but just keep it alive. So very cool that he is doing that. Um, so, you know, round of applause for Randy Pitchford for saving uh, a very like i said very much a la landmark um so uh ho hopefully i'll be attending more magic shows in the future playstation has released a series of vinyl for uh a bunch of their recently released games um or at least their their previous slate so um for ratchet and clank they've released a vinyl for that um you can check out all they're all all really well designed um they look really cool i think a lot of them come with like art as well so there's kind of collector bundles for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. There's one for Ghost of Tsushima, and there's also one for Returnal. So um, I know I remember the Ratchet and Clank soundtrack being really good. So uh, I might actually look into that. Although I don't know that I have a vinyl player as much as I'd like to think of myself as a hipster. Um, uh, and I know that a lot of people really like the uh, soundtrack for Ghost of Tsushima. It'd be really cool to check that out. Um, and listen to that on vinyl. Um, and then Returnal will definitely be pretty atmospheric uh, if you're going for that kind of vibe. You get a lot of uh, eerie planets, maybe, uh, yeah, a lot of lot of uh, darker kind of drippier sounds. So uh, yeah, those all look really cool. Um, so I'll have a link down below if you want to buy those. I think they're available for pre-order, and I think they're going to come out in June, if I remember correctly. So uh, yeah, check that out. Speaking of Beam Dog and Asper, um, they were, they announced a new game this week. Uh, it looked pretty cool, called Myth Force. Um, it is a co-op roguelike, so it might be right in the vein of like a Risk of Rain, uh, which I think is a really cool kind of co-op concept to have a uh, procedurally generated roguelike with that I can play with friends. Um, and it is fantasy themed and it looks very and the art style is very like '80s cartoon. Uh, they even bring it up in the in the trailer. Um, and it looks very kind of Dragon's Lair to me. Uh, so, you know, think back to that kind of classic video game art style. But uh, it is 3D and it's, uh, it is first person, but you play as a series of adventurers and you have special abilities and it looks like you pick up items and stuff uh, and play around with that. So it would be really cool to see. Um, and yeah, I really like the art style. Um, and I, I, like I said, I really like playing co-op roguelikes with friends like Risk of Rain or um, even Gunfire Reborn. We were playing that earlier this year. So um, yeah, these this I think would fall into that kind of that vein and and uh, my friends and I would be happy to pick it up when it uh, when it comes out soon. Got more content about it, so I have to talk about it. Warhammer Chaos Gate Demon Hunters um, is releasing very soon. It releases on March 5th um, and we get to see 20 minutes of gameplay this week. So quite a deep deep dive into actually like gameplay and watching it kind of play out or play through a whole scenario. So um, I'm really excited for it. Uh, I love turn-based strategy games. I love Warhammer. I love Demon Hunters. That was actually my first army I picked up uh, in Warhammer. So uh, yeah, these are all very cool things that I want to, and it's NXCOM-like, like I said, uh, turn-based strategy game. So 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, and I got to see 20 minutes of gameplay this week, so pretty jazzed about that. Last but certainly not least, uh, a game we haven't seen since the Game Awards in 2020 launched this week. Um, road 96 is a procedurally generated kind of narrative where you are taking a road trip um, and you're just kind of going through and kind of experiencing this road trip and making decisions and the narrative kind of branches out. So um, no, I think in the trailer I saw, no two, uh, or the article I read, no two uh, roads will be saint the same for any player. So uh, it'll be really cool for those good water cooler moments where people are talking about their gameplay. Um, and I think they look, I really like the art style for this one as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, just a procedurally generated narrative, I think is, uh, is pretty cool to see kind of how it diverts and, and how many different choices you can make and, and what kind of impact those choices will have. Sometimes, uh, there's kind of a false choice when people choose red or blue and they both kind of lead back to the same place, but there's really a diverging narrative that breaks out and you can end up in any different possible place. Um, I think that could be really compelling. So uh, I'm looking forward to kind of checking out Road 96. Uh, and I've kept it on kind of on my list in the back of my mind since uh, since I saw it at the Game Awards a couple years ago. Um, but that is it for this week. If you feel I forgot anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch. So you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend. And I hope you have a super day. Bye.